Yeah, it's Tri-City Sports Now with me, Marky e. Bilson. And as I mentioned before, uh, the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue, it was in my mailbox today. Here it is, right there. Okay, a nice cover right here. Big news of this issue, I think, is that Tyra Banks is back. I'm saying, wait, I mean, that was 25 years ago and all. This is Tyra Banks, okay, just for people who want to... You wouldn't know it was 25 years ago. Of course, you watch your talk show, Tyra, and all this. But, yes, women are getting more beautiful by the hour. Okay. Also in there, the uh, mixed martial arts fighter, Paige Van Zandt, who I once actually posted a uh, picture on our Facebook page of Paige Van Zandt and our uh, <laughs> and a station employee yell at me and all that. Oh, that's a cheesecake photo. Well, Sports Illustrated is now putting this up. This is for our Facebook viewers and all this. See, this is just another reason to uh, follow us on 1420 WEMB Sports Radio Facebook page uh, and do that. And then I think the uh, breakout, well, the uh, the cover, or my cover, was actually uh, Alex Morgan. There's a double cover. I think there are some covers that may have Tyra Banks or so, but the uh, it has been pushed back, of course, to May. It used to be in February to bright up the summer months. Now they say, nothing's going on in May, so let's do the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit issue in May. That's really saying a lot for February. But, yeah, now February has the Super Bowl. It has the Daytona 500. Uh, it's got the beginning of spring training now, and not just pitchers and catchers report, but actual Grapefruit League games. You've got hockey. You've got, uh, you know, basketball and all that. Anyway. The breakout uh, model, I think, this year will be Haley Khalil. Again, you can see that. So, there we go. That's the cheesecake of the day right there. Sports. But here's the deal. Uh, there has been a lot of talk, I guess, that uh, the swimsuit model this year, they uh, chose Halimi Aiden. And uh, the idea here is to have a diverse look. And Sports Illustrated isn't doing this before. They've been having uh, women of all shapes and sizes and such. And uh, so they have now a model uh, who is wearing traditional Muslim garb. Here we go. All right. I mean, big deal. But some people are saying, hey, wait a minute here. You know, that's not a bikini. And so I got to give it to a parody site and uh, coming out on April 30th, Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Issue features first ever Baptist model in floor length denim skirt. How's this for, yes, okay, the floor length denim skirt and all this. In a controversial move, SI has unveiled photos of its first ever Baptist swimsuit model, pictured in a floor length denim skirt, modest collared blouse, and no makeup or jewelry whatsoever other than her purity ring. Uh, <laughs> Christians quickly praised the decision. All right, there you go. Um, the woman. <laughs> Anyway, the model said it's important for young Christian girls to see the beauty isn't just being skinny or wearing bikinis. It's wearing a comfy pair of sneaks, a lawn denim skirt you could make at home, or a modest one-peat bathing suit under a swim shirt and a long, flowy swim skirt. I think there are a lot of women who would agree with that, to tell you the truth. But yes, with the uh, comment of the uh, women, uh, the, the Muslim woman in her traditional garb, well, maybe that would be the traditional garb of uh, East Tennessee. I get a long skirt and all that. Why don't we put some East Tennessee models in there? You know, I mean, let's find out. Let's <laughs> might as well. I mean, you know, different cultures for different people. That's all that is. All right. Uh, yeah, we say to say that tongue in cheek and all that. Yeah, so. Now. Starting out here, I guess one other thing I was going to tell you about, uh, and this is sort of an extension of Media Watch, I was going to give you uh, the, you always hear this in the hockey playoffs, nobody's watching the hockey playoffs, you know, you hear this. Well, I'm not going to tell you that they're beating the NBA, but I will tell you this, Sharks Lanch was getting 0-6, which would be comparable to something on a network, I guess a you know, networks, they want to get about a 1-0, I think, for their, you know, just, uh, their shows, that sort of idea. 0-6, though, usually, you know. NBA, 
their high rank, and that was for Rockets, Warriors, their high rating was 2.6. Okay, got to get, hey, that's significantly higher. That's four times higher. But the second highest rated game was only a 1-3. Is that significantly higher? I mean, think about this. Like I'm saying, anyway, I will say this. NBC Sports carried a record 112 regular season games this past year, and the overall ratings on the season were up 2%. Might not sound like much. But uh, there were some pretty decent games and some showcase games, like on uh, January 1st, Winter Classic. Is it Notre Dame Stadium, or you could see 100,000? You know, I've talked about a Winter Classic at BMS. Why not? You already broke the college football attendance record. Why not the hockey attendance record? Why not have Predators Hurricanes at BMS on a January 1? Three million viewers tuned in to that NHL Winter Classic, which has really taken off. That's the most watched Winter Classic in four years. Then they had a Stadium Series game where the Flyers came back on the Penguins, a late 4-1 Deficit was erased. Flyers won it in overtime in Philly. That got 2 million viewers on February the 23rd. It was in prime time, up 76% from the stadium match of a year before. Meanwhile, the All-Star game got a million one viewers. It was the league's third most watched All-Star matchup of the last 15 years. Remember, uh, 2007, we became the first radio station here, 1420 WEMB Sports Radio, in the market that would broadcast a hockey game. We were with the Predators in the Stanley Cup, and we broadcast uh, the NHL All-Star game. January 31st, 2017, it's believed to be the first time that the uh, hockey All-Star game was broadcast on a radio station in this market. What do you think about that? Awful announcing has come up and they've had their staff panel pick something. I was thinking about this the other day. First of all, I was thinking TV Guide has just made a uh, listing of the greatest TV shows by state setting. This bothers me immensely because 15 years ago I pitched that idea to them and they turned me down. And I had my own article there and I could tell you what shows I should. Now it's 15 years ago, but you know, it really bothers me because I had that art idea and anyway. Maybe I ought to see a lawyer about that. I don't know. I don't know if I have a case. You know, to see about that. Anyway, here we go. Uh, but there's been some talk. Sports TV shows. Think about this. You know, there are certain things in pop culture. Uh, rock and roll songs about women. Boy, that, uh, that, that just, you know, that, that's not been done to death or anything like that. I mean, you know, think about that. Uh, that's a pop culture entity. TV shows set in California, or for that matter, New York. That's kind of been done to death, too. And all that. Who would they take as the number one show in New York? Think about that. I mean, I would think you'd have to either go All in a Family or Seinfeld. One or the other. Now, there's some people that might write in a drama NYPD Blue or something like that. I don't know. You know, hey, that was really edgy. You couldn't see it in the Tri-Cities for the longest time. I didn't think that was right. That's kind of Puritan mode of the Tri-Cities. But, yeah, I'm trying to think what other New York shows that you could have on there. You know, I mean, plenty of detective. But, no. California, what's number one? I would choose the Beverly Hillbillies. Not because I'm living in East Tennessee, but because in the 1960s, the Beverly Hillbillies did, uh, for just regular episodes in 1964, just it's what was on TV, they did higher ratings than most Super Bowls. It was that popular. Of course, there were only three channels, they say, back then and all that. But yeah, rural America just loved it. And so, you know, that's what I would choose for California. I don't know, you could go down the list, you know, Texas, you'd think Dallas. I know a lot of this is going to be dating with me, you know, and all this. Georgia has to be the Dukes of Hazard. I don't care what anybody says. Tennessee? That's a tough one. Nashville, the soap opera, I think, is what I would choose. North Carolina's got to be Andy Griffith. Virginia. Now, this is not... What did I have? I chose the Waltons. Let's see what they do in TV. But I'm just telling you what they had uh, back then. Uh, Pennsylvania was really tough. It wasn't until The Office in Scranton, of all places, that there was really a hit TV show that was set in Pennsylvania. 
I remember that. But, you know, Massachusetts, you got Cheers. Maine is Murder, She Wrote. You know, you've got these. Vermont would be New Heart. I mean, it's kind of easy there. It's tough to find a show in North Dakota. Give you that. Real tough to find a show in North Dakota. You know, and again, a lot of this is going to date me on what the, you know, you don't know what the contemporary shows are. And all. Okay, but so we won't go there. Anyway. Uh, but that was an idea with TV shows, but there hasn't been until recently really good TV shows with a sports setting. I've been trying for years to do a TV show on a baseball team. Ball four, Jim Bounton didn't make it. That was 1976. Only lasted a few episodes. I remember watching Hardball in the 90s. That had some potential, but it was just too sappy and it didn't make it. Bay City Blues, starring Mike Norrie and Daniel France, uh, in 1983, just was boring. It's trying to be edgy and steamy. And, you know, the manager was going to have an affair with a married woman and all that. Yeah, just, I want to see the ball club. <laughs> yeah, you know, Dennis France talking about how many Bay... I had doubles of you as a buy. That kind of, I thought, was decent, you know. They had pitch a year ago or so, a little recently, it lasted very shortly. It was about a female pitcher for the San Diego Padres. I had a lot of people says, I'm not buying that. You know. But what are the best TVs? Anyway, Awful Announcing came up with some ideas here. One that's on today that's really good, and it's basically online, Brockmire. i got to start watching this. It's a show about a baseball broadcaster who once had a meltdown. His wife was cheating on him and just started talking about it on the air during a baseball game. I think he was broadcasting the a fictitious, the fictitious Royals, and he was, you know, the most popular man in town. Like, we all hope that baseball broadcasters, when you get into it, that we become, and all of this. He had this meltdown, so he was reviving himself 10 years later with a minor league baseball team. That was the shit... I, that's me. I got to watch that. That's great. No, I didn't. I've never been married. Okay, so let's get that established. But otherwise, yes. Uh, me and Castleberry had something, HBO's First in 10, which was a show back in the uh, 80s. HBO had a regular series back then. The owner was played by Delta Burke, and they also had O.J. Simpson on it. But that, they say, kind of paved the way. And that actually lasted a little bit. Matt Clapp chooses Playmakers, which is getting written about in a lot of attention now, 15 years later. Uh, Playmakers was a soap opera on ESPN. I kind of think that Playmakers, though, will become relevant again because I think that ESPN is not going to re-up their uh, contract with the NFL once it expires in 2021, and then they'll be free to have such things like Playmakers on their show, uh, and then they can cover the NFL the way that they want to. A lot of guys go with Sport Night which had Peter Krause, Josh Charles, Felicity Huffman, Joshua Manila, Sabrina Lloyd, and Robert Guillaume. I hope I'm pronouncing it, Benson, okay? And it was created by Alan so Aaron Sorkin, who had later produced The West Wing, and they looked at the hard-edged journalism of sports topics. It lasted two years and uh, got a lot of rave reviews. And Heather Williams at WCYB, she has tweeted out that she is a big fan of Sports Night. Kind of what would happen behind the scenes at Sports Center? Interesting. Uh, Ben Koo liked, uh, Sports Night, and Joe Lucia did as well, uh, and he doesn't like the fact that it's no longer on Hulu, yeah, to go check that out, I, I know it had a, kind of a leftist take, and it's, uh, editorializing and all this, but anyway, uh, Alex Putterman says, you know, there've been a lot of great shows, Friday Night Lights, he's and down, I've seen every episode, The League, Brockmire, but I kind of find myself underwhelmed and disappointed, hmm, uh, and so he goes with pitch. Jay Rigdon said, wait a minute, what about sports shows? WWE Monday Night Raw, it's been on 25 years. It's scripted. It's a decent out-of-the-box idea. And Matt Yoder says coach. That's decent. How come no one chose a Slap Maxwell story? With Dabney Coleman, Kermit Dungeon, crusty sports writer. I'm telling you, that is the sports writer, my friend. What Dabney Coleman was so realistic way back when. But I guess it's, yeah, Dabney Coleman. It can't make it. And, you know, Dabney Coleman just can't play a character that you like, I suppose, I guess. All right, Tri-City Sports now. Tomorrow, Josh Brown, knock nomination, and Jerry Bonkowski on NASCAR. WEMB Sports Radio Irwin. Real Sports.